Aloha, everyone. Thank you for choosing to be with us here for our Mililani Community Church online worship service. We're glad to have you with us this Palm Sunday. It has been another week of quarantine. I'm not sure how all of your weeks went. Uh, maybe some high achievements, maybe some low struggles. I had some very real conversations with my family. Uh, through some vulnerability, confession, and openness, I was reminded of my identity in Christ and also the process of refinement I'm going through that we're all going through. We're all in desperate need of Jesus in our lives, whether we admit it or not. Jesus mentions in John 10, 11, that he is the good shepherd. He lays down his life for the sheep. Thus, we, his sheep, must not worry or fear because he is near. He watches over us. He will guide us if we follow him. So my prayer for us all is that we would learn to better trust his word. So let's pray right now. Gracious Heavenly Father, Living in quarantine is difficult at times. We can't control our circumstances, nor how others choose to live, but we can surrender our own wills to you. Thank you for your word, which helps us know and trust you. Help us to find joy and peace in our shared sufferings with Jesus. May we live with the resurrection power that casts out worry and fear of death. You are our good, loving, and faithful shepherd. May we worship you alone with all of our heart and soul, mind, and strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sing, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me. Let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. Worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like that. i 
This next one is called Psalm 23. Um, it might be new for some of you, uh, but the words will be familiar. It goes like this. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters, His goodness restores my soul. Let's sing that again, the Lord. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still his goodness restores my soul. Manly ladies, you do the echo. And I will trust I will in trust you alone. Trust in and I will trust I will in trust you alone. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will lead my ways in righteousness and he anoints my head with oil and my cup it overflows with joy I feast on his pure delights and I will trust in you Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, as we walk through this time of uncertainty and struggle, 
May we not worry or fear because you are with us. May we find comfort in your goodness and mercy. Let the peace we have in you calm our anxieties and our joy overflow into the lives of others. Give Pastor Jason wisdom as he speaks from your word. Let your word pierce our hearts where we are vulnerable, that we might be transformed into your likeness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, church. Can't believe that this is a week before Easter. Next week is Easter Sunday. Unfortunately, we won't be celebrating Easter as we are accustomed to here at MCC. Things will be a little different this year. I was expecting to gather together over our Easter breakfast. I was expecting to see the children enjoying themselves after service at our Easter egg hunt. And the hula ministry was working really hard on their dance. And I was looking forward to all of us being blessed by their ministry and also the corporate worship together. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. You know, others in Scripture had their expectations dashed as well. This day, otherwise known as Palm Sunday, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And as you know, he fulfilled Scripture. And the people had an an expectation that Jesus would be their conquering king who would lead them in triumph over the oppressive hands of the Romans. However, their view and understanding of Messiah did not match how Jesus understood his role as Messiah, and their hopes were dashed. On Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem this Palm Sunday, he was surrounded by shouts of, Hosanna, right? Please save. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But later, the shouts of praise, expectation, hopes, would turn into angry cries of crucify him. My friends, we're going to have the privilege, thanks to Ben and Justin and Hannah and Pat, to provide for all of you a Good Friday service. Usually we have it in the evening, but it should be uploaded and ready for you to view on Good Friday. So be in prayer and join in worship on Good Friday and then, of course, on Easter Sunday. Let's continue to worship our God in in the preaching of his word. And if you would join me in the word of prayer. Father, we live in these uncertain times and we know that there are people in our body, in our church, that are going through some challenging times right now, uncertain times. And some, it doesn't even have anything to do with the coronavirus. And Lord, we need to know that you are with us. We need to know that you are our shepherd who lovingly cares for us and provides and protects. So, Father, please use this message to bless the lives of each person in our church that is watching and perhaps those that aren't in our church but will be watching as well. Move by the power of your spirit. Take your word and do your mighty work that only you can do in the hearts and lives of everyone that hears. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You know, it's been such a long time, but I vaguely remember a Bible that I received from a preschool that I was attending. That's some 45 plus years ago, maybe. And I really don't know where the Bible went, but if I recall, it was a picture of Jesus tenderly caring for sheep. And it was either on the outside cover or the inside cover. And the psalm that was highlighted there was Psalm 23, which is the psalm that we're going to look at today. It's such a beloved psalm. In fact, Charles Spurgeon, he's the one that said that he probably had nothing new to add to this psalm. So many have done such excellent jobs on preaching and teaching on it. This is a psalm that's well known to Christians. And even among non-Christians, they know this psalm. You know, I probably could go back and count, but as right now, I cannot recall how many times that I've preached on this psalm while conducting a funeral service. 
And the reason is many people had this as one of their favorite passages in Scripture. And so I just used it for their services. And that's understandable because this is such a comforting psalm. Now, while this psalm is often shared at a funeral service, it most certainly doesn't have to be. In fact, in such a time that we're going through right now, this psalm is certainly fitting. But even if we weren't going through this pandemic, this psalm would still be very relevant for our lives. I mean, who doesn't need to be reminded of the loving care of our shepherd? Who doesn't need perspective on what comes into our lives? Who doesn't need reassurance of comfort? Who doesn't need to know and be reminded that God provides and He pours out blessings into our lives? Who doesn't need the assurance that God will see His sheep through life and death and all the way to our eternal home? So no matter what you're going through, and it may have nothing to do with fear or concern about this coronavirus, no matter what you're going through, in this psalm, I think you will find blessing for your soul. And so with that, if you would, Turn with me in your Bible to our passage for this morning. It's found in Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Psalm 23, David writes, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now from this text, here's our focus for this morning, and that is in these times of heightened anxiety, it is good for us to trust our shepherd, our host, and faithful one. First of all, when we look at this text, we see the blessings of having the Lord as your shepherd. Now, before going on, one thing we, we, we must make absolutely clear is this, that the Lord must be your shepherd. He must be your shepherd if any of this psalm is to apply to you. So we should not just read this text and, and feel good and comforted by what is said. Now, this passage, the blessings and the promises in it do not apply to everyone. The psalmist David says, the Lord is my shepherd. That is, he has a personal relationship with Yahweh, with God. And he has it right now. The only true and living God, Yahweh, was not shepherd at one point in his life and then stopped. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. He is my shepherd. And so you must have him as your shepherd if you're going to experience the blessings and the promises of what follows. So the question we must begin with is, if the Lord is your shepherd, how is it possible for, you, for sinful men and women and teens and children to enter into a relationship with God? Well, the answer is found in Jesus. Remember, Jesus said in John chapter 10, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. For what purpose would, the she would Jesus choose to lay down his life for the sheep? Why would the sheep need Jesus to do this? Well, in Isaiah 53, there God describes us as sheep. And he points out that like sheep, we tend to wander. We wander away from God. That is, we count ourselves as more important and valuable than, than God. And so we, each one, has turned to his own way. Now, that's not a good place to be in, to turn from God, to walk away from God, to be in this self-directed life, to turn away from the fountain of living water. It's sinful. In fact, it's not for our good. And therefore, because of our sins, we're under the judgment of a holy God. But the good news is that on Jesus, the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jesus bore in his body all our sins as he died on the cross. 
the righteous for the unrighteous to bring us to God. Now, Jesus did die on the cross for our sins, yes, but he did not stay dead. For as the scripture says, Jesus rose three days later. So, what do you say about Jesus? Do you believe this? If you would turn from your self-directed life and turn and surrender to him, Jesus, believing he died for your sins and rose from the dead three days later, you will be saved. That is, you'll be rescued from all your sins. You'll be rescued from the wrath of God that comes on account of it. For at the cross, Jesus bore, he, he took the punishment you and I deserved. And by receiving him into your life, you will have a, have a personal relationship with this God. And you will have him as your shepherd. And you will be able to say, the Lord is my shepherd. He is my shepherd. And then and only then, what follows in this psalm may be applied to you. And so start there, my friend. If you have not received Jesus, receive Jesus Christ into your life. Now, the wonderful blessing is that if God is your shepherd, you have all that you need. Notice verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The psalmist says, because he is my shepherd, I have everything I need. I have him, and God's provisions are perfect. There's nothing wrong, there's nothing lacking with God's provision. Whatever God, our shepherd, knows we need, he supplies. The question is, do you trust him to supply? My friends, this is a beautiful psalm of trust, a beautiful psalm of trust in the Lord. Now, not only that, but he also restores you. He restores you. Boy, today, in our day, we feel pretty worn out, don't we, these days? We need to pray for all those uh, that are in the medical field and uh, first responders that are tirelessly working to, to help people. They can be worn out as well. We need to be restored. Notice verse 1 to 3. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. David says, like a good shepherd, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Now, that's a beautiful picture, isn't it? It's a picture of abundance, green pastures. David, as a sheep, could eat. He can feast. Now, here's where we may have a bit of a skewed picture, because in places, really, where the shepherds would lead their flocks, you might be surprised that they would even have food to eat. They weren't in the farmlands. They, the sheep would ruin those places. They, they had to go out on the mountainside. And the shepherd would lead them. And with the winds of the Mediterranean Sea and the humidity and, and the morning dew, you would often find near rocks a lot of moisture and grass growing out of it. And so the shepherd would lead his sheep to these greens that they could eat. And then he would lead them further and keep going. And so, my friends, as a sheep of the Lord, <clears throat> the Lord meets his spiritual needs. He leads you to satisfy your hunger, and then he leads you to more. And so, like grass is to hungry sheep, so the word of God is for food for the sheep of God's pasture. The Bible says, like newborn infants, long for the pure milk of the word, that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. This is why it's so important to read God's word and why we encourage you to take up that Bible reading plan, the Bible reading plan in a year. This is where we as sheep get nourished by reading God's word, by sitting under the preaching and teaching of God's word. You see, if you ignore God's word, you're going to be spiritually malnourished. Therefore, feast on the Word of God. Take advantage of this time, perhaps, to feast on God's Word more than you ever did. Notice, he also says in verse 2, He leads me beside still waters. He doesn't take the sheep to gushing rivers where they get a little anxious, they're going to get anxious and stuff. He takes them to still waters. They can drink, they can be refreshed. 
Alan Ross points out, quote, the placid waters could also wash the wounds and cleanse soiled spots. And he says throughout the Old Testament, tempestuous waters speak of distress. But he says calm waters for washing represent spiritual cleansing. And he says the point is the Lord cleanses his people from sin and provides spiritual refreshment, spiritual renewal from the chaos of life, end quote. This is why I believe David says he restores my soul. He makes me lie down in green pastures. I'm going to be spiritually nourished. He doesn't want me to go just anywhere to drink and find satisfaction. He leads me to waters that are safe. He leads me to waters that are drinkable, waters that will refresh me. In other words, when I sin, I, I, I get forgiven. When I'm worn out, he renews me. And God is faithful to provide for our needs. I shall not want. He is faithful to provide for my needs and yours as well. God not only restores you, but he also guides you. He guides you. Look at verse 3. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, the imagery of the shepherd is still present here. He, he leads me. Now, how does God give David guidance? Well, in Scripture, we see God leading in many different ways. More normatively, he leads through his written word. He leads through spiritual leaders who preach and teach and counsel from God's word, just like David would receive in the sanctuary. God also leads and guides us where he wants us to be through our circumstances. You know, sometimes we think that a certain course of action is the way God wants us to go. We may even expend much time and energy and prayers in it, but things may keep happening that prevents us from pursuing a certain course of action. Now, I'm not saying that if that happens, that God doesn't want you to continue that way. He may want you to persevere. Maybe the timing is not right. However, my friends, I think we would do well to consider that maybe he is directing, maybe he is guiding us to another path. The question is, are you open to receiving guidance, even if it means your plans may change? My friends, the point is God is sovereign over David's life. He's in control, and he will direct him, and he's faithful. He's faithful to do it for you and me as well. And when God leads us, you can be sure, my friends, that he will not guide you in an unrighteous way. You and I may choose an unrighteous or an ungodly or inappropriate way or path for our lives, but the good shepherd, my friends, never leads that way. Why won't he lead that way? Take a look again at verse 3. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So why won't God lead that way? Because his reputation is at stake. And he is absolutely, God is absolutely committed to the upholding of his name. Not only does our shepherd restore and guide us, but he also comforts, comforts you. These are wonderful blessings, aren't they? With God as your shepherd, he comforts you. Take a look at verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So this tells us that God doesn't just guide us and allow us to go through the green pastures, the, the still waters, you know, those joyous and pleasant and pleasurable times of life. There will come a time when we will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I believe, I think it was a book that I read a while ago, Philip Keller's wonderful book, A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23. I believe it was in that book where he pointed out that in the valleys, there are real dangers that lurk. Shadows that one sees indicates real danger. A shadow indicates real threat, whether it be a wild animal or whether it be robbers that are, that are there to, to pounce at the right opportunity. But here, notice, death is only viewed as a shadow. And shadows by itself may cause someone to fear, but really the shadow can do nothing. Death is like a shadow. You remember, Jesus died for our sins and he rose triumphant over death. So death has lost its sting according to Scripture. Jesus triumphed over it. 
And because of Jesus, ours is the victory as well. Now, even though this is the most dangerous times for God's people, death, David says, I'm not going to fear. I will not fear. Why? The answer, he says, is that God is with him. He says, you are with me. Now, notice at the beginning of the psalm, he speaks and talks about God. Right? The Lord is the she- my shepherd. But here he shifts and he begins talking to God. Talks to God. You're with me. And isn't that what Jesus is for us? He's Emmanuel, God with us. My friends, God wants to comfort you even in the worst of times. You know, when you think about dying, the, the process of dying, it's a dreadful thought. Right? It's a dreadful thought. I mean, we think about the coronavirus and the things that some people have succumbed to, thousands of people have succumbed to. The process of dying is a dreadful thing. But, oh, death for the Christian, the one who trusts Christ, oh, death, where is your sting? If my, if my life gives way and I lose everything and I lose everyone I hold dear, my friends, God is with me. You know, when you're in the hospital, Maybe you've been there before where someone, a loved one, is going to die. The family and friends gather around, and, there's, and they're comforted by our presence and your presence. But there is only a certain point in which you and I can go with them. Because when they die, we can't go with them anymore. But there's one who does, and that's God. You are with me. Even when others can't be with me, you are with me. God's rod and his staff, David says, comforts him. That is God's care and protection. Comfort him in the most dreadful of days. We're going through a valley, aren't we? You know, there are, these are times that we would not call uh, these mountaintop experiences. <clears throat> we wouldn't call these pleasurable, enjoyable times. These are disturbing and urgent and challenging and difficult times. But you know what? God can use it. He can take these things and we can have mountaintop experiences through it. He can deepen our reliance and trust in Him. And I want you to notice something, that if you go from one mountaintop and you want to get to another mountaintop, chances are you've got to go through a valley, right? Most mountains are separated by a valley. And in order to get there, you don't stop walking. You don't sit and complain and whine. And you don't go back. You don't give up and think, life is not worth living anymore. No, you keep walking. You keep walking. Notice the text again. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Why keep walking? Why don't we have to fear even the worst of situations? The answer, God walks with us. He walks with you. Perhaps because of the situation we're in, perhaps for some of you, he's using this time to make you aware of your need for Jesus. It's quite a humbling time that we're living in. You're fearful, you're anxious, you're very concerned. And God is saying to you, that the worst thing that this virus can do is to take your physical life. And God says the only way not to fear death is to have me as your shepherd. You know, these are some of the blessings of having the Lord as your shepherd, but there's more. There's the blessings of having the Lord as your host. Notice verse 5. You prepare a table before me, excuse me, before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. First of all, we see that he makes provision for you. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You prepare a table before me. In other words, the Lord lays out the spread, right? The food, the drink, like a good host. God provides him food and all the, all the good things like he just mentioned about his spiritual renewal, his spiritual refreshment. And notice, God does this literally in the face of his enemies. 
That is, those who were against him, those who wanted to do him in, those who wanted to do harm on him. In fact, when you think about enemies, these are things that threaten one's security. David says, God is like a host who honors me and, 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 and has this wonderful spread of good things. And like a good host would do, he would protect his honored guests. In fact, it was the custom that the host would protect his guests no matter what. It was his duty to ensure the safety of his guests. So even in the midst of the danger of his enemies that threaten his security, David says, look, God provides good things and protects to make sure his own people are safe. So my friend, how has God provided for you? David can rest secure and safe even in the face of his enemies, things that threaten him. How have you experienced the blessings of God's protection and provision? How have you experienced his security and his supply, even in the days in which we find ourselves living today? This picture also here communicates that he openly welcomes you. Right? As, a, as a good host, God has anointed his head with oil. You see, a good host would give his honored guests oil so that they could freshen up. In other words, God is lavishing on him as a good host would, which gives him joy because he's openly welcomed. And then in the process, he supplies you with good things as well. He says, my cup overflows. I think it's the King James Version that said, my cup runneth over. My cup runneth over. So you, you see the picture. When you think about the cup, it's, 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 it's in the, it is the Bible's picture of your life. The cup is the portion of your life, the, the lot of your life. And here, at, the, at a banqueting table, you can be sure there's going to be wine. There's going to be good wine. And David says, the cup of my life, God fills it with good things. My cup runneth over. As Psalm 84 says, no good thing does God withhold from those who walk uprightly. No good thing does God withhold from those who walk uprightly. God can give you what you need and even more. He provides us with so much in this life, but not only this life, but he also gives us so much that stretches forth through eternity. And so finally, we see the blessings of having the Lord as your faithful one. Take a look at our last verse in this text, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now notice he doesn't say, I think. He doesn't say, I, perhaps. He says, surely, surely. In other words, this is going to happen. As God's sheep, as I've heard it and I've read it said before, God has two sheepdogs on us. Their names, goodness and mercy, or loving kindness, or loyal love. And they follow me. So wherever I go, there they are. All the days of my life, the psalmist says. In other words, God is fully committed to lovingly care for you. You know, sometimes we think, why in the world things aren't going the way we want? Why in the world things aren't going the way I had planned? Perhaps, perhaps it's because we veered off course. And if we have, well, in comes those two dogs, right? Goodness comes barking. Mercy or loyal love comes nipping. And they push me back. They drive me back to the good shepherd. They drive me back. You know, if you look at this text there in verse 6, the word follow, the word follow means to pursue, to pursue. Goodness is going to pursue me. If the way that you are going may not promote God's fame, or if you're heading toward a path that might endanger you, or pursuing a course, whether it be a profession or a, a person that will not enhance your life, well, God's dog of goodness is going to drive you back. And the dog of mercy, that loyal love, will keep you, keep pursuing you, because God is faithful to keep his promises and uphold his word in your life. Mercy will pursue David and us, and will never let us fall out of God's loving care. Question is, do you trust him? Do you see in your life, my friend, goodness and mercy pursuing you in the midst of where you are 
in the midst of where you are, working for your supreme good? Have you seen that in the past of God, dogs of goodness and mercy coming in, driving you back to the Savior? Not only is God fully committed to lovingly care for you, He will see you also all the way through life, all the way to your heavenly abode with Him forever. Notice verse 6. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. My friends, every Christ follower that you know who has gone before you in death, you can be sure that the shepherd got them home safely. There's no doubt here. God is faithful to bring me home. He is faithful to bring you home. He is faithful to see him through life, that is the green pastures and the quiet waters of life, the pleasant times, the joyful times, the memories that are wonderful, but he's also faithful not only through taking you through those green pastures and quiet waters, but even the valleys full of fear and anxiety and threats and even death all the way to your eternal fellowship and communion with God. The sheep of God will go through many ups and downs in life, but the future for God's sheep is secure. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God is faithful to ensure that this take place. My friend, do you trust Him to do it? Do I trust Him? Oh, for grace to trust Him. In our daily bread, there was a little article that said, talked about Philip Parham, tells a story about a rich, a rich industrialist who was disturbed when he found a fisherman sitting lazily by his boat. The guy asked him, why aren't you out fishing? And the fisherman said, because I've caught enough fish for today. But why don't you catch more than you need? said the rich man. And he said to the rich man, the fisherman did, what would I do with them? Well, you could earn more money, came the impatient reply. And you could buy a better boat so that you could go deeper and then you could catch more fish. And you, then you could purchase nylon nets and catch even more fish and make more money. And then soon you'd have a fleet of boats and you'd be rich like me. And the fisherman said to him, then what would I do? Well, the rich man then said, you could sit down and enjoy life. And then looking calmly out at the sea, the fisherman replied, what do you think I'm doing now? What do you think I'm doing now? My friends, with God as your shepherd, he supplies what you need. Sometimes he gives us more than we need and expect. In fact, I would say most of our life he gives us more than what we need and expect. He gives us joyful pleasures. He walks with us through those difficult situations in life. He secures our future. So in this life, we can rest in Him. No matter what comes, we can trust Him. We should trust Him. We must trust Him who is our shepherd, our gracious host, and faithful one. And so, my friend, may you press on. Press on with your shepherd. And then finally, let me ask you, is the Lord your shepherd? Maybe you say, how, how will I know that I'm, I'm, I'm his sheep or that, I'm, that, that I have him as my shepherd? Remember what Jesus said in John chapter 10? Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. They follow me. So that's the question you need to ask yourself. Are you following the shepherd? God's sheep listen for God's voice in the scriptures. And they follow the shepherd and his ways. And so I trust that you will follow the good shepherd and thus display that you are his sheep. Because as Jesus has said, sheep follow the shepherd. They follow the shepherd. May you follow him all the days of your life as well. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for allowing us the privilege to open your word this morning. Thank you, Lord, for each and every person that is listening and following this psalm. I pray, Lord, that you would remind us 
of your loving care on our life. We need to know that you are our shepherd in the midst of these days. When we're fretting, we need to know that the shepherd will calm us. We need to know that the shepherd will see us through the dark times. We need to know that the shepherd holds us secure. That though everything in life may be stripped away, including our own health, that we won't be stripped away from you. you. Father, for anybody that has not received Jesus into their life, I pray that today that they would receive you. Jesus came this Palm Sunday into Jerusalem not to be a, a king and a conqueror who would destroy the Romans, but he came in to submit himself to the will of God to die on the cross, to rescue people from their sins. And I pray that each and every person that has not received you would call out to you today and experience life-transforming power that you can bring as they see how valuable Jesus is and receive him into their life. We thank you, Lord. Prepare our hearts for this upcoming Good Friday service and also our Easter service as well. We pray this in Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor Jason, for those words. Uh, we're going to close um, our song with Unchanging. Great is your faithfulness. faithfulness you never change you never fail oh God true are your promises true are your promises you never change you never fail oh God so we change you never fail oh god see one more time why does your love why does your love and grace why does your love and grace yeah you never change you never fail oh god so we raise up holy
sin is and is to come. Yeah, we raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. One, two, three, four. Hope you are blessed today and have been encouraged in your walk with the Lord. Second Thessalonians 2, 16 to 17 says, Now may the Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. The Lord be with you as you go about your day. God bless.